My name is Phil Parazio, and I am the chief of the Division of Urology at Penn Presbyterian Hospital in Philadelphia. I'm going to talk to you briefly today about angiomyolipomas. So angiomyolipomas are one of the most common benign tumors of the kidney. And by benign, we mean not cancerous. These tumors, while they can look like cancer on a CT scan or MRI, do not have the ability to spread from the kidney. They cannot spread around the body, cause any problems, and they will not kill anyone. And that's what we mean by benign. Angiomyolipomas are slightly more common in women, and because of that, we believe they may be estrogen related. Now they're called angiomyolipomas because they're benign tumors composed of angio, which means blood vessels, myo or muscle, and lipoma or fat containing cells. This is important for a number of reasons. First, because they have fat in them, they're often very easily detected on CT scan or MRI because we can detect or see the fat. If we see fat in a tumor, we know with nearly 100% certainty it's an AML or an angiomyolipoma. Renal cancers do not have fat in them, typically. The other really important distinction is that they have these poorly formed blood vessels. And while they're benign, meaning not cancerous, these are also abnormal blood vessels. So they predispose these tumors to spontaneous bleeding uh, from the kidney. Now, there's a lot of controversy about the right way to manage angiomyolipomas. Now, the original data actually dates all the way back to a paper published in 1986 from the Johns Hopkins Hospital, which really just had a handful of patients in this study. And you got to remember, in 1986, if a patient showed up with a bleeding kidney and had a problem, they were very likely to undergo a nephrectomy or emergency removal of their kidney. The data has changed a lot since then. And while that early data indicated that the larger the AML, the more likely it was to bleed, we now recognize that data is probably not entirely true. What we know from the newer angiomyolipoma data is that only about 2% of these tumors will spontaneously bleed. And prior to earlier literature, which indicated that AMLs greater than four centimeters had a higher risk of bleeding, that's probably not true anymore. It really doesn't matter how big these AML are, the risk of bleeding is really only about 2%. If you are diagnosed with an AML, you can expect them to grow slowly, about 94, 95% of them will only grow about a millimeter or two per year. So they can be safely watched with ultrasound or other forms of imaging. Occasionally we'll see increased growth rates in women who are undergoing pregnancy or actually actively pregnant due to the changing uh, hormonal milieu in their body. There's certainly some nuanced discussions to be had if that's your situation. We do know that there's a slightly increased risk of bleeding if when your doctor's looking at your CT scan or your MRI, they see a visible vascular malformation, something called a pseudoaneurysm actually in the AML. If you are diagnosed with tuberous sclerosis, which is a genetic condition typically passed down through families, you have a slightly higher risk of bleeding from your AML. Or if you've had a prior history of bleeding from that angiomyolipoma, there's a greater than 2% chance that you're going to spontaneously bleed again. That risk probably only goes up to about 10% at most, so it's still not a very high risk that one of these AML may bleed. Now, if they do bleed, it's often exquisitely painful. It can feel kind of like the worst pain of your life in either your right or left flank where the kidney is. It's not often a subtle discomfort or a subtle issue going on. People know immediately when their AMLs are bleeding. Importantly, in 2022, where we are now, there are very few blood transfusions for bleeding AMLs. There are very few emergency surgeries and we almost never perform nephrectomy or removal of the kidney for an angiomyolipoma. We now have interventional radiologists who can access the kidney and with pinpoint precision, stop the bleeding in that kidney, similarly to interventional cardiologists who can place a stent in somebody's heart if they're having a heart attack. So how do we manage these angiomyolipomas? In general, there are three management strategies. The first is called active surveillance or keeping an eye on this AML recognizing that there's a low chance or a low probability of spontaneous bleeding, that these are growing to grow slowly, and that most people have access to medical centers within half an hour of their homes 
active surveillance is really the preferred option for most patients who are diagnosed with an angiomyolipoma. Selective embolization in a prophylactic fashion is, uh, is often considered and can be recommended for some patients. This is going to the interventional radiologist as an outpatient procedure to have that AML embolized to reduce the risk of it spontaneously bleeding. Now with a 2% or less lifetime risk, prophylactically embolizing these tumors is not for all patients, but if there's a special circumstance where patients are at higher risk, it may be recommended. And lastly, in rare circumstances, we may recommend partial nephrectomy or surgical removal of just the mass and sparing the kidney. Thank you for your time. Look forward to talking to you about your AML in more depth.